Okay, today's session I'm going to combine planche work and press handstand work. So I'm starting in this upright position, so hip nice and high, rounded upper back, tiptoes light, so the start of a press handstand. And then I'm going to try and elevate the hips, go through into a straddle, and then from there press up to my stool to press to handstand. And now I'm going to do an eccentric lower to planche. So, tuck, but I'm trying to go down the hardest way I can. So I might start in like full planche right at the top or like a planche lean like position. It's not full planche, but go towards that position and then slowly open to straddle, to frog, and then open tuck, close tuck, as slowly as I can. That one was hard because I was talking, I'll make excuses. You could break down that movement and do a similar thing to your level. So if you're more progressed, you could do the version that I just done or a harder variation, maybe a straight legged L sit through to a pike press to a full planche would be really extreme, but it's a good way of combining both the handstand press work and the planche conditioning. And if you're still working towards the press handstand and other skills like that, you can still do this, but you just have to regress it down. So you could do a start of a press hold. You could walk through to your L sit, whatever that looks like. So it could be there. You could raise the hands up even higher, which make it easier. Then you could walk back through and then enter the handstand in some way and then just come down slowly into a tuck planche hold or a crow position. But just combining those two movements, so really focusing on the planche and the press work, so that straight arm pushing strength. So a set without talking, I'm gonna try and progress everything. Too happy with that transition as I got to about straddle planche position, so high straddle planche, and then try to come in slowly to the tuck position. That sped up too much. So what I'm going to try on the next one is I'm going to try and hold the straddle planche for longer, so I can get deeper, but knowing that I'm going to rush into the tuck at the bottom. that one up. I'll blame the ring here and the ring with my foot but the uh, the transition I just got totally messed up and went through to the stool to, but it still counts as a rep there's some time under tension there good to play with variations especially when you're doing combinations there's no set rules with these it's just about not dropping getting as much control through the movements as you can if we have any areas that we drop like it's wasted space so we really want to fill that with time under tension now we could do a similar combination but go planche press to eccentric stalder, so the other way around. Now obviously planche press is seen as harder than lowering to planche, so you have to play with your progressions here, but a planche press is basically meaning that your legs and hips are lower and more backwards compared to your shoulders and your hands. So like a standard press is gonna be more stacked and go up there, where planche press might start from this position. So now when my legs go up, they're going out and around, much further away from the shoulders and the hands. So I'm gonna see if I can get a closed hip froggy-like position planche press with an eccentric stalder, and then see if I can get back to the start of the press position. So basically the same movement, but in reverse. A bit clunky, but you get the idea. Now a combo that I really like is to cut the handstand out completely and just go from the straddle L sit to planche back to straddle L sit. So that would look like this. Ooh, that was hard. So not the prettiest straddle planche, you could argue it was more like a froggy 
position than a straddle or high hip straddle planche. But that transition, what happens to the scapula, that straight arm push that's needed, the elevation that's needed, especially being so close to the floor, I think that's a really good training demand that carries over to the presses, the planches, and the straight arm push in general. Now you could do the same variation instead of starting in a straddle L sit, you could start in a standard L sit. Working on higher bars allows you to have the feet lower, but still going through to the planche progression. So you can go from L sit to tuck planche, back to L sit, or you can progress to harder versions of the planche. So there's so many different options to match your goals, to match your current level. And I'd also recommend investing in a few different pieces of equipment. So like the higher P-bars, the lower P-bars, the Ikea steps, the wooden boxes, as they just keep adding more and more options in terms of clearance and techniques. Obviously make sure you spend enough time on the individual components, the individual skills, so the planche itself, the handstand itself, and the components that make up things like the press handstand. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll speak to you in the next one. Thanks guys.